Yeah, we welcome Jamal Yimmer. Welcome. Also from Ethiopia, we welcome Milkesa Mengesha. And we continue with Galen Rupp from Portland, Oregon. Welcome, Galen. All right, Frank, you're the hometown kid. You get to start this entire, oh what's that? Oh boy. There we go. <laughs> you made a memorable debut back in 2022 with a strong finish, I believe sixth place. What did you learn from that race that you can carry into the 2024 edition? I, I keep forgetting what place I got in that race. And every time I come back, I'm like, oh, all right, six. So I feel like I've been, I'm learning to like be more memorable about how I do at these things. That's an interesting <laughs> perspective. How did you come upon that? Um, I think last year I corrected somebody. No, I was fifth. I was definitely fifth, and I was, I was not, and I felt very terrible after that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, I think every time I come back, I always, it's like, I feel super welcome. Like, I, I don't think there's any other race that I'd be like, Frank, come back, welcome home, and I'm like, I'm, I'm here, I'm back again. Um, but I... I I was driving from the East Coast to here to like see my family for the holidays, and I think I came into Texas. You see the first Bucky's, and you're like, okay, home, home stretch, home stretch. <laughs> and then uh, you're on I-10, and then like the road bends, and you're like, oh, there's the skyline. I'm still half an hour from home, but I'm here. Um, so like every time I come back, it's always just like a really memorable like, I'm home, I'm welcome, and I'm excited to race again. Well, we are thrilled you're here. One of the great uh, memories for us, the images of friends and supporters cheering you on as you ran back in 2022. What does that level of support mean to you? It is crazy to just like, they're probably not all cheering for me, <laughs> but- There I, were a I, bunch. They're, they're, I, I do have like some friends that line the course, but like I, I'll hear my name or I'll like see someone in like a straight Deseret Letterman jacket and I'm like, Hi, it's for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm, it's, it's really uh, motivating and like, kind of like lets me forget about like how much how hard it is what I'm doing and just be excited about what I'm doing. Um, and I'm hoping to take that a step further and let it kind of fuel me to really finish hard this year. Fantastic. Last one. What makes this race, this course, uh, such a favorite for some of the best in the world? It's a fast course. You can always count on. Uh, the race being put together really well and like having really elite athletes like these guys here and all the women to come out and like show their best and it's always like at a time of year where like people have been kind of hibernating and they're like ready to come out and like really do something special and really run fast so I, I'm always really excited Houston is kind of like at least for like the distance runners of the world that I know and in, in the US are always like Houston's the fast race and you go to Houston to run fast. And we look forward to it. Well, welcome home. It's great to see you. From Ethiopia, again, we welcome Jamal Yimmer. Jamal, uh, you returned to Houston, first time since winning this race in 2020. Congratulations. Why is the time right to come back to the Aramco Houston Half Marathon? <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, uh, Houston uh, organizer and Houston uh, thank you uh, America I have a marathon 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 October maybe I have a marathon I have a marathon and the fit and the course is And the training is training Thank you. First of all, thank you to Houston organizers and thank you, America. I've been running the marathon and the half marathon, and I've been preparing since October for these races. The last time I came here, I missed the course record by one second. 
but this time I've prepared very well and I've been training specifically for that. That's why I'm here, to try to break that course record. So thank you again for inviting me here. Absolutely, and we welcome you. Speaking of that winning time, 59.25, second fastest in race history, the winning margin less than one second. What do you remember from one of the great finishes in our history? Uh, Ludray, uh, one thing I remember from that race is that it was very cold. Um, but as we were running, it was actually my own mistake because at a certain point, I could have taken off earlier and I think I could have done better. But, you know, things happen and you do your best. But now I am in good shape and I hope that I'll be able to improve that. But you never know what will happen in a race, but I'm prepared and I'm hoping for the best. Well, your best stands with the world's best. Welcome and congratulations on your past success. We look forward to a great race. Also from Ethiopia, we welcome again Melkesa Mangesha. Lone appearance in the Aramco Houston Half Marathon. He won this race when he was just 21 years old. Melkesa, why is this course, this race, such a great fit for you? Uh, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. That time it was a bit cold. It was actually very cold. Um, but the course is flat. It's a great course. I didn't really expect to run that well. Um, but this time I think it's slightly better weather and I've trained very well so I'm hoping to be able to run a good time this time as well. 2020 Olympian in the 5,000 meters. He returns with a new half marathon personal best, 58-58 in Copenhagen. Do you begin this race with an expectation for a great time or simply to beat the field? No, Cassie, yes. It's okay. Yes, D does he come here uh, expecting a great time, a record time, or is his goal simply to beat the field? Uh, I'm hoping not only to win, but because I've trained very well and I'm in good health and I'm hoping for God's help, I'm hoping to also attack the course record, so both to win and to a good time. Fantastic. Well, welcome and good luck. Next up from uh, Oregon, we welcome Galen Rupp. Welcome to Houston, Galen. Uh, he is a silver medalist in the Olympics back in 2012. He won bronze in 2016. Galen, how does this race fit in your Olympic plans for Paris? This has been on the schedule for a while. Um, so I'm really looking forward to being here. Um, this is my first time racing the Houston Half Marathon, and, and I 
and I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, I think the last time I raced in Houston, I was still in high school, but in the junior cross country race, which was a long time ago. But uh, yeah, I have a lot of a lot of great memories here, and this fits in great. You know, for the, we have our Olympic trials coming up um, in about three weeks, so um, this is a great time to get in a, a real hard race effort. Um, you know, we're definitely. I think all the marathoners here that are dropping down to run the half are, are deep into training. Um, this is kind of right at the at the end of, of a real heavy block of training. But uh, started to rest for this, and uh, I think that this is going to prepare me really well for three weeks' time when I go to race a marathon. I believe you are attempting to make your fifth Olympic team. Is that correct? What would that mean to you, that fifth Olympics, which is such an elite group who has been able to do that? It'd be tremendous, you know. Um, Obviously, I, I got to get it done on the day. Um, that's one of the, the brutal but, but fun things, I think, about the system that we have here is that it all comes down to getting it right and being in the top three, um, you know, on race day. And, and I think that, that that pressure is really great and is always prepared, you know, Team USA for when we go to the Olympics to, to get it done there because this isn't the first time that there's been one race that has so much on the line. So I think that it would be awesome to make a fifth team. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty incredible looking back, but... Uh, yeah, I think that this race is going to really prepare me well to, to hopefully do that in three weeks' time. You mentioned your experience here in Houston a long time ago. We have literally watched you grow up and become one of the great runners in American history. Now we see these beautiful images of you with your children. How does fatherhood change your perspective on racing at a world-class level? I mean, being a dad is the single greatest thing I've ever done in my life. You know, I love my kids to death. Um, my wife and I have, have four little ones, and, and they're the best thing ever. You know, I think that trying to always be a good example for them, um, leading by example, you know, showing that, um, you know, things don't always go well. You know, in, in sports and in life, there are so many ups and downs, and, and that's certainly true in, in long-distance running. And trying to teach them those lessons um, has, has been huge. But... Obviously, you know, remembering that I've, a lot of the reason why I do this is for them as well. And, um, you know, when I have a tough day, you know, they have taught me more than I think I'll ever teach them just by watching them. And, you know, their unconditional love for me, you know, regardless of how things go at training day, you know, they'll come home and they're always so ex excited to see me. Um, and it's, it's the best part of my day when I get to just hang out with them and, and play around with them a little bit when I have some free time. So, yeah, being a dad has, has been unbelievable. And, uh, yeah, it's just been such a fun journey. We welcome you back to Houston. Any questions for our elite field, okay? David, we'll start here and then we'll continue on. Hey, this question's for Galen. Nice, nice to see you. Um, running a fast time and finishing in a high place here would raise your points in the world athletics uh, point system, but also really hitting it hard and going after Ryan Hall's record would also be something very special. Without giving away too much of your race day strategy, What's, what's foremost in your mind as you're on the course uh, on Sunday? Can I jump in? Could you just pop up your microphone and make sure that, that uh, switch is up? There we go. Is that better? You got us in the back. There we go. <laughs> um, well, I mean, the, the big goal for me, you know, is, is obviously the Olympic trials. Um, you know, I'd be lying if I said that I was in the, the greatest half marathon shape coming into this just because it, I've been training for a marathon. You know, it's a... Uh, it's been a real big buildup. Um, it's been going really well, um, but I've always believed that you know to really run a super fast half, it's probably better coming from 10K and, and having more of that that track background. Um, it doesn't mean that I can't run fast here um, for sure, but uh, you know the most important thing is getting in a, a great effort um, and, and really getting ready for the for the trials in three weeks. And I think that with the course here, I've heard so much over the years about how fast Houston is. Um, the weather's usually great. They say it's cold, but um, I guess coming from more Oregon, maybe I have a different right. point of reference, but, uh, um, you know, whenever you have a tremendous field, you know, of athletes, I think that it just raises the bar for everybody. You know, it brings out the competitor and everybody, and, um, you know, I think here, and then wanting to go after the, the course record, you know, it, it certainly has a great chance of being a fast time tomorrow. Dale, did you have a question? Anybody else? Frank, why don't we start with you? Um, so I've been here for a few weeks now, and uh, I looked at the weather for where I normally live in Colorado, and it's like a low of negative two today. So I'm just, 
I'm just really grateful I'm not there right now. <laughs> I think as cold as it'll get in, in, on, on Sunday, I don't, I'm not too worried about the temperature. uh ያስጀግረኝ <laughs> comfortable cold and there's uncomfortable cold. I, ha Sorry. I have run in Boston where it's quite cold, um, but after a while, I was running the Boston Marathon, do you feel a little less cold after you've been running? In this case though, it's just a half marathon, so by the time you finish, you may not have warmed up that much, you still feel the cold. So um, I think I might feel it a little bit difficult, just speaking for myself personally, but an athlete has to be able to put up with both the cold and the heat, and I'm prepared to try to do my best anyway. Fantastic. Galen, do you want to jump in here? The mid-30s is the forecast. Temperatures may actually drop a little bit. That just seems like a nice spring day in Portland and Eugene, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just thankful to see the sun. Usually right now it's, it's gray and drizzly where I'm from, so uh, in the same temperature, if not colder. But the conditions are what they are. You know, we're, we're here to compete. Um, I think everybody is, is real committed to, to doing their best. Um, and, yeah, we're all going to do our best out there. And, um, yeah, I think that there's still going to be some, some pretty great performances tomorrow. And we look forward to it. Any more questions? All right, our photo opportunity. If you guys will jump to the front here, they'll hand you your bibs, and we'll get those. Patasha Wilback. Good morning and welcome, Natasha. From Ethiopia as well, we welcome Barutite Degefa. And from Kenya, we welcome the Kochi Chepengeno. Kochi, welcome. Good morning to everyone. We would begin with uh, Rama. A question for you. You have had success all over the world as a three-time champion of the Rome Marathon. What motivates you to com continue to compete at the highest levels in the world stage? Rom <laughs> Uh, I have been, you know, participating with uh, a lot of uh, uh, world stage, but uh, the main reason they bring me here in Houston, I've been preparing myself and promising myself to go to Houston and participate. So, because before I've been participating at New York, which is, I was a success. So this one is gonna be my next one. That's why I came to Houston. Fantastic. Please let her know we are thrilled that she is here and we welcome her to Houston. Yeah, love that again. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you, Rama. 
Next up, Natasha Bodak from Canada. One of the most unique resumes anywhere in racing. She won two Canadian national titles in 2023, including, I believe, at 10,000 meters. Is, is that correct? Congratulations. What is the motivation to run the full distance here at the Chevron Houston Marathon? Uh, hello? Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to run the Olympic standard. So uh, 226.50, I've run 223 about a year ago. So uh, that was outside of the window, so I know that Houston is one of the fastest marathons in the world, not just North America. Um, so I've come here with one goal, and that's to get that Olympic standard and um, you know, qualify for the Olympic team for Canada. I can feel your energy. How has the training been going? Uh, what's your level of fitness as you enter this race? Um, training was going really well. Um, is going really well, sorry. <laughs> uh, we said I got into Berlin shape, which means that's where I ran 223. So I feel like my fitness is indicative of running, you know, under that Olympic standard. So um, hopefully the weather is good and there's a good group of ladies to work with and I can just get after it on Sunday. I'm excited to be here. Fantastic. And we welcome you. You are a two-time Olympian. For, for those of us who will never know, uh, what is the, the honor and the source of pride to represent your nation at the Olympic Games? Uh, there's nothing like it. It's such a, a privilege and an honor to represent your country. I'm so proud to be Canadian and to have been able to, you know, be on 20 national teams and go to the Olympics. And, um, you know, unfortunately, Tokyo was like the quarantine Games. So my friends and my family and, and my coach, they weren't there. And so... I really want to go to Paris and I want to, you know, have my friends and my family and my partner and, and everybody there to see the marathon and to run the marathon. It's, uh, there's nothing like it and uh, so hopefully I get another shot. <laughs> well, congratulations on all of your success and welcome to Houston. Thank you. From Ethiopia, we welcome again Baruch Tite Degepa, three-time champion of the Chevron Houston Marathon. You should smile at that great success. What is the secret, perhaps, to that level of success in one of the great events in the world? preparing very well for the race and I also love Houston so it allows me to come here with a lot of confidence I think that's why it's an amazing race. Fantastic you are returning to racing uh, after missing all of 2023 we understand how do you feel and how has your training been heading into the Chevron Houston Marathon? Fantastic. Well, welcome back to Houston. Congratulations on all of your remarkable success. Thank you so much. From Kenya, we welcome Vikoti Chepengeno. People still talk about her remarkable effort. 2022 Aramco Houston Half Marathon, setting a record for the fastest half ever run in North America. Vikoti, what stands out as a great memory of that record-setting performance? I'm so happy. Uh, I like Houston. That's why I decided to come and de debut in marathon here because Houston marathon changed my life. Since then, I'm not the same again. Uh, she left me where I, wa I was before, so I'm happy to come back again and debut in marathon here. Thank you. 
Well, welcome back. Obviously, you've set records here. Do you come to Houston hoping to set a, a record at the full marathon? Yeah, I trained well for marathon, so I'm hoping for the best on Sunday. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, welcome and congratulations on your success. Any questions okay. from the assembled media? David? Uh, good luck to everyone up there. Uh, Tasha, Melinda Elmore is the only Canadian woman who's qualified for uh, the Olympic marathon. So the question is 43, you're 42. What has been the secret for you and maybe uh, also for Melinda for staying in the game so long at such a high level? Thank you. Nice to see you, David. <laughs> uh -huh. um, yeah, you know, I after the Olympics in Tokyo, I was sitting there with Melindy, and I was saying, you know, whoa, we're like 40, turning 40, like maybe this is time to, and she said, there's no expiration date. It's not like you turn 40 and it's like, eh, you're done. We're just, there's no, ex you're just running until you can't anymore. There's no number. There's no, when you're 44, you're too old, you're 45. So I'm just continuing to run and not even thinking about age. I'm just, you know, surrounding myself with an amazing support team and people that believe in me and not doubting myself because of my age. Um, I think also just, um, you know, recovery is, is key and that has been one thing that I've always taken very seriously. I still take days off every 10 to 14 days, even in marathon training, which most athletes don't do, but for me, that's what I need to do and maybe, you know, it's because I'm in my 40s and I need more recovery, I don't know, but I continue to get faster and so I'm just not letting age have anything to do with why I'm, I need to slow down. You know, maybe science says probably when I reach 50, maybe <laughs> things <laughs> might change, but for now I'm, I continue to get faster and my training shows that I'm in PB shape. So um, yeah, here you go, well into your 40s. You can do it. As a proud grandfather of three, I can tell you 42 is really young. So 